Hey, this is a multi-part series and I have linked part number one in the video description down below. Oh, and if you want to follow along, you go to procurementzen.com slash digital where you can download the resources, chat with fellow students. And by the way, it's completely free. So let's start with video. In this lesson, we're going to use NIME to make our very first evaluation. We want to know which vendors with bad payment terms should we focus on. So far we have covered a lot of groundwork. We imported and joined different tables. We enriched data. We cleaned up columns and reordered them. This is all tidying work, but how can we use NIME to better support our decisions? How can we define rules that help us make better use of our time? And how can we do that without going through hundreds or even thousands of line items? This is where the great analytical capabilities of NIME kick in. If you remember, it is called NIME Analytics Platform for a reason. And the first analytical node we're going to use is the Rule Engine node. This node enables us to use our human custom logic in the automation. So our question was, whom should we focus on? What would be a good indicator for this? I would say it is probably the existing payment terms. A rule we can apply here is to exclude all suppliers that already have good payment terms. So let's quickly switch to the screen and I will show you how to do that. All right, so here we have the workflow where we last left off and we want to find our rule engine node and we find the rule engine node of all, as always we can search if you type in the term correctly and you see it is located in manipulation row other and there are several rule engine nodes but the one we're looking for is this one here so just click the column resorter because you see from the last part of the workflow the excel writer doesn't have an output port because it just writes in an, an excel file but does not um, hand over data at an output port so we take it from the column resorter so we select the column resorter and then double click the rule engine node in the node repository and as you can see you can have multiple um, path if you want or, or lines going out out of one output part so let's just put it here let's just adjust the um, arrow here a little bit or the data line if you want the transmission line let's just do it like this and then we just have a somewhat decent not too spaghetti like um, workflow and okay, so what does it does? Um, we put a delete text, that's what we want to do and we come to that in a second. So um, let's just say put delete tag for line items with, oh, we just have to scroll down with good payment terms. All right, so the rule engine let's just open up its configuration by using a double click and you see the layout is somewhat familiar to what we know from the string manipulation node so we have our available columns here we have a flow variables here and we will learn about flow variables very soon very powerful concept so make sure you subscribe to our channel to not miss out on this important lesson and we have our functions here and the expression here below so what one thing you immediately see every rule engine node whenever you put it into your workflow it comes with this commented out text so you see we can comment out stuff here by using these uh, double forward slashes and we could just say a hey, procurement zen is an awesome website um that is very helpful um no, uh, because of two reasons the first reason is you could document what you're doing in this specific rule that you're applying here and that's important if you share your workflows with others 
or if you don't use them that often. Just in our case, the payment term improvement workflow we're working on might only be used every month or every quarter. So it would be interesting in the future if we open it only up once a month to have an idea, hey, what is this thing doing after all? The second thing, and that's a very nice from the nine people is, um, you see the last line here? First of all, it's like a little, little helper, right? It, it, t it tells you how it explains how it works. Um, enter ordered set of rules like so if the double column name is uh, the, the value is greater than five we you call it large if the string column name is like blue then you call it small and blue uh, everything else will have the default outcome so in our case we don't need a default outcome but this will come in very handy once we go into the advanced module of this online course where we will talk about excel formatting because there we make heavy use of this true outcome so let's just keep this one like it is um and look once more um uh, quickly at the result from the column resorter let's just right click and look at the output data so assume that we talked about already what would be a good rule and a good rule is for our purpose here that everyone who already has sufficient payment terms will get a delete tag because we don't want to focus on those ones so we need to delete all these how can we determine if the payment term is good or not well let's have a look at the column we created you see a006 stands for net 90 a007 stands for net 120 and a005 stands for net 60. So we assume that net 60 is already good. Net 60 or better is a good payment term. We don't want to touch these. What we can do is we can check the PMT code column. That's why we left it in. We can check it and um, then basically um, apply a rule saying hey if we want to use uh, if this has a specific code in here um, then you could uh, then it gets the delete tag this is the more complicated way but I wanted to show you the more complicated way so you get a feel for the rule engine note one thing of course you could also do is you could say well the value in the PMT days is 60 or greater that's also something you can do so let me know in the comments below this video if uh, uh, i should uh, have an alternative workflow presented to you for download that follows that specific rule just let me know in the comments um below this video but we will focus on a5 a6 a0, uh, a7 here so let's close it up let's just phrase our rules so the column we're checking is pmt code and what we're doing is pmt code is like because pmt code is a text we see this here from the string so we cannot say equal or something we just say like a005 so that's our first rule or and this is basically the same as in microsoft excel pmt code is like a006 or pmt code is like a007 and if that happens and now comes the important part we make an equal sign and a greater than sign that creates this little arrow then we want to have the delete we want to have the term delete in the column we are going to use and uh, or we are going to create and we just call this column delete tag and we will use this in the very next um, lesson, uh, these deletions. So as always in I'm it happens stepwise, but that's the big advantage as we have discussed already. So you see also, um, if we just take this one out again, let me just cut it off with control X. You see, I could not save it. You see here is a little little red cross that says, hey, something's wrong here. If I say, okay, it says, well, that's that's not a valid rule. It, it, you, you tell me what to check, but you have no outcome specified. If I have checked it, what should I do with it? So we always need this little part arrow and then what we want to put into the column we create. We could also overwrite something, but in this case, it makes more sense to have a new column. So we say, okay, and we press F7 to execute. And now let's have a look at the classified values. 
You see, everything that's A005 has a delete tag. Everything that's below A005, so A001, A003, A004. So all these zero days, 14 days, 30 days, payment terms, line items, they have a missing value because we have not defined a true value. We can do this immediately. Let's just go in here to, if you don't like the, uh, this missing value would be perfectly fine. But for the sake of this lesson, let's just say we, otherwise we put in do not delete. All right, so every, that means everything that's A5, A6, or A0, uh, A, uh, A7 gets the tag delete, otherwise it gets the tag do not delete. Let's just quickly re-execute. And here we are, classified values, we now have do not delete, do not delete, delete. And we have done this for 8,000 rows. Wonderful, now we have a classification for our line items, which one we should focus on. That was not too difficult, right? And congratulations, you have taught a machine to follow your human thinking. It might not feel like it, but this is a major step. The rule engine node is very, very powerful and you will use it a lot in the future. Promised. In the next lesson, we will use our old friend, the row filter node to focus on the selected suppliers. Oh, and by the way, I noticed that most people are not yet subscribed to my channel. So if you like this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe and I will post more of those tutorials. Thanks a lot. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with Nime. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.